point blank where we start out the hottest topics and chat them with you on point blank. That's right. That's right. With us in the living room today is uh, Sandra, Su Ching, and Alvira, uh, three owners of uh, the shop Made with Love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they join us today because we are chatting about the economic crisis. <laughs> And how retailers are fighting back to win the consumer dollar. <laughs> yes, but first, mm. uh, actually in today's My Paper, it carried an SPH web poll on how Singaporeans are actually cutting down expenses amid the financial crisis. We have a video, so let's take a look first. Dark days ahead with the financial crisis. Well, despite that, Singaporeans are confident that the government will pull the country out of the crisis. The SBH web panel poll of 487 respondents found that 70% of the people trust the government's ability to tackle the problem and protect their interests. So, will consumers tighten their purse strings? 56% say eating out will mean less restaurants and more hawker centres instead. Still early days in the downturn, but 4 in 10 people are cutting down on shopping, while vacations abroad were cancelled by 2 in 10 people surveyed. More people are also saving up on their cash. 42% of respondents say they are saving more, while the rest were sticking with their old saving habits. On the flip side, 14% felt they were not affected by the economic downturn. The reason? Well, they had low or no involvement in financial investments. 11% felt that they were unaffected as their companies have not been hit by the crisis. Some of the reasons they gave for feeling so secure was that they had a stable job with enough savings for the rainy days ahead. Overall, most expected the financial crisis to tie it over in one to three years' time. Mm. (laughs) Very very informative. Okay, but these are just numbers and we need to know how the people on the ground are feeling like okay as a retailer you guys are co-founders right Mm -hmm. are you opposed to the term co-founders no no No, okay (laughs) so i'm still alive (laughs) happily co-founders okay um have have you guys been hit by the technical recession in any way it's it's a bit it's hard to tell at the moment because it is the festive season Mm. so we're expecting to probably really um, see any effects of it around about february march perhaps Mm-hmm. Right now, um, we're still fortunate that um, what we have to offer seems to be right up everyone's alley in terms of their shopping needs. Mm. Mm. You guys are based in like Plaza Singh, right? Mm-hmm. Do you want to tell us a bit about what you guys offer? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Go! <laughs> <laughs> Go. Oh, basically, um, we're a scrapbooking shop mm. specialised in carrying scrapbooking products which ranges from pattern papers, um, stickers, rub-ons, and a lot of different embellishments that you can actually put them together with your photographs and therefore you know, create a page like that to document your memories. And basically, you can also use those materials to make little gifts for your families and friends. Um, so we ha- bring like a wide variety of products to our customers and they can choose, pick and choose depending on their preference, um, their scrapping style, what we call, like, you know, some people like a more um, streamlined look, some people like to add a lot more stuff on it. Um, we have different mediums for them to try out different effects as well. So basically, um, we provide a one-stop shop for, for our customers' scrapping needs. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, who made this? <laughs> oh, okay. This is actually done by one of our... Um, staff, Jasmine, and this is about her and her husband. Okay, usually when people scrap, um, it ties back to their memories, it yep. ties back to their families and their loved ones. So you have people who come in and scrap something for their boyfriend, for their mm. husband. Um, mothers love to scrap for their, their children. children. Yeah, mm. wow. We have a lot of mothers scrapping for their children. Fathers for their... Mm. <laughs> Once in a while, you we do have... Yes. We actually yeah. had Eugene. a father. We actually had a father who scrap. came and brought, uh, bought stuff so that his wife and children could scrap. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> I, I just got it. Oh, nice! <laughs> Good on you, wherever you are. Okay, but I mean, okay, this is interesting because uh, one of the, I mean, your items are very customizable, mm-hmm. mm, and also because, like, uh, how much are they priced? 
They well, go from what anything. The range. Okay, mm. it, it can be anything from like a dollar. A ribbon for a yard is only fifty cents. cents. But if you're yeah. talking about buying tools like a die cutting tool, we have an electronic die cutting tool that mm. can be about seven hundred dollars. So you, you know, it really depends on it what ranges, you're. It yeah. ranges the price range of the products that we have. We cater to every different. But if you're um, talking about just if you're doing up a page like yeah. this, you will probably it will cost you anything from like five. Ten dollars, depending on what you want to put on it. Yeah, yeah. So it can be really affordable, but yeah, yeah. It really okay. Depends. Do you think the pricing that you guys have for the items are actually one of the reasons that you guys are not being affected or hard hit by the technical recession? Don't think it's so much just the, price. the pricing, yeah. but mm. a lot of the other things that we do. I mean, we have workshops um, that'll help inspire scrappers. They can come in and hone their scrapping skills. Um, learn new ways of doing things. You know, um, we've got crop parties. These are like scrapbooking parties where people come together and let their hair down, have fun, scrap together, munch, mm. chat, mm -hmm. and just mm. go crazy. Um, tons of activities that we have every month for people to come down, socialize, have fun. So you're not just coming to our place to shop and buy, just buying things. It's a whole experience that we're hoping to give to our scrappers who come visit us. Mm. Okay. And I think um, a lot of scrappers, when they come down, they just want to de-stress after work. Yeah. And I think that's <coughs> the kind of experience we want to give them. Yeah. yeah. I see. Okay, but actually, like, uh, scrapbooking is actually quite mm -hmm. a sort of a niche market. It's mm -hmm. for people who are interested in mm -hmm. doing this. So mm -hmm. how, how do you guys, like, uh, attract customers, like, outside of this group of people? Actually, I think uh, scrapbook products themselves mm -hmm. are already very attractive. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually have to be in scrapbooking to mm -hmm. want to buy scrapbook products. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially women, you know, they see anything like flowers, anything <laughs> floral, anything pretty, they want to buy. So oh, I is it? Yeah. <laughs> I have never known that. <laughs> okay, you know, it's oh, in you general life. <laughs> Like, the secrets of womanhood <laughs> revealed on this show. All oh, okay, women so, are suckers for pretty things. Yeah, so yeah. pretty. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Floral. And then women will buy it. Yes. Alright, yeah. I've got my business plan, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, no, 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 yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay, continue. And after yeah. that... But like she said, it's the hmm. product itself. Um, it, it lends to many users. We've got lots of people, artifati people from like graphic design, um, advertising, who come in and they need our stuff to get their projects done, mm -hmm. to you know, to get their uh, ideas going. And, and uh, yeah, lots of art students love using scrapbooking materials for, for assignments. And, mm. and, and guys off the streets come in and get stuff so that, you know, guys love doing up their cars. They buy some of our stickers, like the bling bling stickers, and they line their dashboard with it <laughs> and stuff like that. Like the um, is it? To <laughs> <laughs> each its own, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, uh -huh. as long as you've got an idea, you mm -hmm. can pretty much do quite a bit of stuff with what we have in the store. Okay, so is it, what about um, your retailing neighbors? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, because I think what you guys do is uh, emphasize a lot on community building. Mm -hmm. And also, like, you know, strengthening the, the memberships and whoever that, you know, uh, wants to reach out to you guys, you're very welcome to it. Mm -hmm. But what about your retailing neighbours around Plaza Singapura? Mm -hmm. How do you think they're faring? Any anecdotes from them? Well, they, the eateries seem to be doing really well. I think mm -hmm. some mm. of them are reacting to it really quickly. They're offering special Buffet. midday buffets at really reasonable prices where otherwise they would have had empty tables in the late afternoon, but now they're doing high tea Stuff like that. Everyone's been really react, reacting. Really, um, they're not just sitting back and letting yeah. things happen. Everyone's coming up with unique ideas, and I think yeah. consumers appreciate that. Uh, as from looking at the long queues that form. Yeah, but I think like forty three percent actually said that they would cut back on mm -hmm. their spending, and mm -hmm. I think fifty six mm -hmm. percent were saying that you know, hey, uh, we're gonna cut back on eating because eating out is. Mm -hmm. Quite expensive. Yeah. Now they are moving to hawker centers instead. Yeah, hawker centers. I mean, a lot of people are cutting costs. So how do you, do you guys plan to so sort of stay afloat? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Wait, just think like now it's <laughs> February next year. What's the plan? Mm. You want to talk about merchandising? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think uh, for us, it has always been about shop entertainment. Yeah. The whole experience of shopping at our place, and I think. So sort of like Disneyland, right? Which yeah. kind of make it that because you go to Disneyland, you yeah. forget the time, and you know. Yeah, yeah. kind yeah. of. We just go back to asking ourselves. It helps that we really feel passionate about what we're doing. That this was and is our hobby, mm. 
mm-hmm. which which is why we got get it started. So we always go back to asking if I were a scrapper coming to Made with Love, what would I want to see? What would I want to mm-hmm. experience? Going with that, that helps us decide what we're going to do next. Um, you know, if I had to tighten my belt, what would make me come down mm-hmm. to the store? And so mm-hmm. we're doing our plans along those lines. And I think essentially because our business is about your own memories, it's mm-hmm. something very personal. Mm-hmm. And maybe in times of difficulties, you know, you think about your relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Okay, not say it doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 Money can't buy you everything, but it's oh. your relationship that's important, yeah. right? Mm. So. On that premise, people still want to document their memories and and recapture the good times. Oh, they will continue to have this um, desire to want to document their mm-hmm. their their um, memories and their feelings, and it could also help them put down their their thoughts about mm-hmm. you know certain mm-hmm. things that they have done. In the past. And this craft activity it helps you stay at home. So <laughs> technically, yeah. you ah. spend less mm. money. You don't have to go out and have equal amounts of fun. Yep. You know, de-stressing at home playing around with all these scrap supplies that you have. So I think that in the end, you know, it, it's, it's, it works out well for everyone. Um, I, I think, okay, one thing that you guys have in your shop also is a cafe. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, was the cafe hit in any way? Were people buying like one biscuit less? <laughs> or, or latte less one shot of coffee? Well, to be honest, the cafe was more of something that supported what we were trying to do with Made With Love. It is not our main source of uh, income that we depend on. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't say that, you know, it's whether it, its performance is going to seriously hurt us or not. It is basically one of our, just one of our ways of uh, making the shopping experience a wholesome one. Yeah. So it's at the end of the day, we still invest a whole lot more in scrapbooking supplies and yep. products, and that's what we're essentially about. We do not proclaim to be a full-fledged F and B outlet. Yep. That's just mm. to make it homely for everyone yeah. who comes to to visit us. It's like a kitchen. <laughs> it's like our homely kitchen <laughs> where everyone. Will you guys diversify even more, like mm. s- to make it more at home? Mm. Like maybe like foot massage. Or <laughs> oh, we have been thinking about putting an awesome <laughs> thing <laughs> there, or whatever. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Thinking, like, oh, no, yeah, like, totally. Oh, what kind of stuff I mean, the, the, the husbands, you know, the husbands oh. have been suggesting that we should internet. have a room. Internet. Um, in, yeah, mm. internet access. Well, we do have wireless, TV. you know, SG there. So yeah. some husbands do sit around at the cafe with their laptops to surf. Uh, but of course, one day, maybe you never know, like Sephora in Paris, right? Our mm. dream is to have internet <laughs> terminals where guys can just go there, stand around and surf around. You know, for the wife's for the wife's shop, shop. You know. and then we have a room for yeah. the little children to play. Yeah. With oh the yeah, the play. So <laughs> instead of uh, instead of putting the kids at the daycare, you can put the wife and the kids <laughs> in the shop. Is it? That's kind right. It would be so nice if we could have a playroom because we all got kids. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So what what is like the feedback from your customers so far about the shop? Um, they've been very kind. A lot of them have turned friends. They have been very forthcoming with their feedback. A lot of it we use, which is why we've managed to to do what we've been doing. So, um, specifically, what would you like to know about the <laughs> <laughs> feedback? They, they like it that we mm-hmm. constantly strive to bring variety. We, every week, we have new arrivals. That's something we're going to keep doing regardless mm-hmm. of the situation. We're just going to probably be more selective about uh, how much and what sort of new arrivals we're going to bring in. But we want to keep it exciting. We're not mm-hmm. going to let down mm-hmm. just because it seems like things are going to be getting a little rough. But yeah, so we'll so it's constantly evolving, sort of like yes. Madonna, you know. <laughs> I changing. love Madonna. <laughs> yes. Keep changing yeah. to keep the interest fresh. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So, but what about the? Okay, you guys travel quite a fair bit, right? I mean, you guys beforehand you're telling me that uh, you went to the states yeah. and you know to go for trade shows and stuff like that. Yeah. How do you think the the retail scene in overseas countries like differ from those in Singapore? Like that you can see. Well, the thing about it is that Singapore... Do you enjoy the experience? Oh, I definitely... We totally do. We totally do. We draw from ideas that we've seen Mm. Mm -hmm. and bring it back. Yeah, but uh, we we are like less... We're more optimistic when we look at the retail scene, at least the local Singaporeans, than as compared to the fellow Americans. So Mm. whatever we do here, it, it, it gets a warmer reception at the current moment. Oh, okay. Mm. Than than over there. So, um, it's great that we're able to use whatever we've learned uh, from the US and and bring it over here and add our own. Yeah, Yeah. because Mm -hmm. we have to, we have had to adapt quite a 
lot of stuff because sometimes the, the the things that work in America really doesn't work here. Yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, to do quite a lot of uh, adaptation as well. And we were having a discussion previously because uh, uh, we were talking about how Singapore is a bit faddish. You know, mm. once you have something that's niche, you know, people will just mm. latch on and duplicate <laughs> and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So in the end, the original concept of it sort of fizzles out when everybody's trying to, mm-hmm. you know, like bubble tea. <laughs> we were we were actually really concerned about it at the yes. beginning yeah. whether it would be yeah. fetish, but mm. I think preserving preservation of your own memories can never be a fad. Who how can it be a fad to be sentimental, <laughs> to care about your loved ones, to be in love? That's not a fad. <laughs> um, Is it? It's something you want to celebrate. Hello. Oh no! But yeah. now, you know, oh, but now <laughs> all the youths are becoming yeah. more emo. They are having long hair, golf. But makeup. self-expression and scrapbooking <laughs> lets them do that. <laughs> It's all about self-expression, celebrating the self. Huh. And mm. and I have seen tons of teenagers, as opposed to when we first started five years mm. ago, yes. hardly any teenagers, but now it's hip to scrapbook. It's yeah. hip to have your own photo diary. Um, blogging is still, you know, very popular, but it's not tangible. Not like you, you know, it's just not as fun as well, I suppose. That's true. You'll play with stuff. Okay. Okay, okay, more on it after... This comment. Okay, we, we have comments from the web. These are people that are watching live. That's right. Actually, Singapore Kpo says uh, people need hobbies, good times or bad. So it doesn't mean that in times of recession, everybody will give up on their hobbies. I guess so. Mm-hmm. And then Cervanti said, I'm not too crazy about the idea of having a cafe in a shop. I feel that a shop should be a shop. Diversifying in too many things could dilute the purpose of your business. What do you think about that comment? Mm. That's a very interesting point, which is why I said mm-hmm. that the cafe is just support. Um, in we essentially still a scrapbooking business. Um, we don't do too much to promote the cafe. Mm-hmm. Regulars use it as a meeting place. Mm-hmm. We do not aim to come up with new menus all the time. Mm-hmm. We stick to what we're good at. We have a few good dishes that we we constantly um, do, and we don't intend to do you know elaborate stuff with the cafe. It's mm-hmm. supposed to just be. Uh, uh, like a pit stop for all our regulars to come and get to together. de-stress to de-stress and manufacture a memory yeah. <laughs> it helps to build a community yeah. like mm-hmm. because scrapbookers like to come together to yeah. get to know each other better to get, you know get help on their scrapbook pages yeah. so mm-hmm. they like to talk about their experiences yeah. so I think the cafe is not so much to really serve food drinks and you know but it's f- kind of a place for everybody to just get together yeah. Mm. And it yeah. just so happens that we do want to take pride in what we do, and so yep. we're not going to serve you rubbish food. <laughs> they we do it. try our best to come up with delicious stuff. <laughs> yeah, they are really, yeah. and, and um, it's usually comfort food. It's comfort oh, food. Oh, yeah. so a lot. We like the oil, fried food, or a lot of sweet stuff. <laughs> right. We try to bake. And okay, yeah. we go one more comment. That's why right. Blake uh, 101 said, but my friends are saying, better shop now before times get worse. Are you banking on these buyers? <laughs> 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 That's an interesting kind of way of thinking. Yeah, well, it's true, yeah. because I think... Uh, Okay, from from you guys, I can tell that I mean it's uh, basically a effort of sort of love, you know, because you guys are all very interested in it. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of uh, other retailers are in it for the business and profiteering and all that. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, throughout some way, you guys have survived for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you guys have garnered a keen business acumen. So, are you guys banking on these buyers, these people <laughs> that will shop now before times get worse? I think when these are short-term buyers, what we're mm. looking for in keeping are the ones who will stick with us through thick or thin. Mm. And these are relationships that you need to cultivate, which is why I say many of our customers have become friends, regardless of the economic situation. Mm. They will still choose to come to us to meet their scrapbooking needs. So, yeah, I wouldn't bank on these buyers who are going for a quick bargain, banking in on all the cheap sales that different retailers might be having. We're looking at building strong, lasting relationships with, with our, our, our customers. Mm. Yeah. It's very interesting. Uh, mm. How about your online site? You were saying that your online site is actually mm. a very um, yes. good facet of yes. your business. Because I think like nowadays, <coughs> for, okay, for youngish people like me, <laughs> youngish, <laughs> if I don't see it online, it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not going to go out and say like, hey... Hi. I want to go and check out what this shop is selling, even though I don't know what it is, you know. Yeah. I will not say that. Maybe mm. I'll be like, does it have a, you know, <laughs> URL maybe. So, I mean, you guys are saying, what's a, I mean, how do you guys start on your website and how do you maintain it? 
Um, I think it helps a lot that when we started the blog, and then we also had some uh, publicity. Cov- we, uh, we were exposed in the U.S., and then we had a lot of people from the U.S. come in and visit our blog, and that's how we got more exposure internationally as well. Mm. Um, we, we also have our own online forum where scrappers can come in and chat chat mm-hmm. with each other about ideas and are about these forums very active um pretty much active there are there are peak periods and then there are periods where it's a there's a slight lull depending on holidays and examination mm. periods and stuff like that but um we try to create a very um, accessible communicative environment so you could get feedback from us pretty much within 24 hours you post a question on the forum our online forum will be able to answer it regarding our promotions regarding anything mm. i think okay. that so helps uh, keep us really yeah, closely very good communication uh. yeah the website itself um, we we advertise everything that we have to offer in the store and it's convenient for people to just go and log in and check it out okay yeah. okay yes we need to go for a breather okay <laughs> a breather <laughs> when we come back more on businesses rental and all that jazz <laughs> Yeah.